Lesson 01. Solve linear equations and inequalities. The golden rule is do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. That would be a quote from Jesus. And notice it's, you know, just the thought that you're supposed to do others like you'd like them to do to you, not as they have done to you. Just because somebody does something you don't like to you doesn't mean that you can do the same thing to them. What you should do is what you would like to have happen to you. Algebra also has a golden rule. And it is do unto one side of the equation as you have done unto the other side of the equation. So whatever you do, do it to both sides of the equation. A general way to solve linear equations is to get the, all the variables on one side of the equation, and then you get everything else away from the variables onto the other side. Then you end up with x equals your number. But as you do that, remember to always follow the golden rule. If you get rid of 2 on one side, you have to get rid of 2 on the other side. So for our first example, let's try to solve 3x plus 6 equals 0. So we're going to get things away from the x, starting with the things furthest away. Well, the 6 is the, close, is the furthest away, so we're going to get rid of that first. So I'll subtract 6 from both sides. Yeah, they cancel out. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. Now it's 3 times x. To undo that, we'll divide by 3. 3's cancel out, we have x equals negative 2. And of course, you should check by plugging it in. 3 times negative 2 plus 6 is in fact 0. Let's try another one. Solve 2 times x plus 1 equals 5x. Oh, well, here we have x's on both sides, so we need to try to get those together. So first of all, let's distribute. So it'll be 2x plus 2x, 5x. Now let's get the x's together. So I'll subtract 2x on this side, which means I subtract 2x from the other side. So I have 2 equals 3x. And now it's 3 times x. We'll divide by 3 to get it away from the x. And so it looks like x is 2 thirds, which again we could check if we wanted to. Alright, let's solve another one. 4 times x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 16. Well this one's actually an inequality because it has this greater than symbol, but the steps are generally the same. The thing furthest from the x is the 4, so we'll divide by the 4. So it's 4 times that, so we'll divide by 4. So if x plus 5 greater than or equal to 4. Then get the x by itself, we'll subtract 5 from both sides. x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So remember, for solving by inequalities, if you times or divide by negative, change the uh, greater than or less than. So if you multiply divide by a negative number, you flip that inequality around the other way. Let's try another. Let's solve this one. Oh, this one has x's on both sides. So let's get the x's on the same side. So maybe I'll add x to both sides. That could be negative x plus 5 is less than 17. Um, furthest thing from the x is the 5, so I'll subtract the 5. So if negative x is less than 12, then I need to get rid of the negative. So I'll divide by negative 1. I divided by a negative, so that means I need to change the sign. So now instead of less than, it is greater than. This next problem actually has two variables. So we're going to solve for y. 
So we don't care about anything else. We just want to get the y by itself. So the furthest thing from the y is the 2x. So we'll subtract 2x. So 5y equals 12 minus 2x. And now it's 5 times the y, so we'll divide by the 5. So if y equals 12 minus 2x divided by 5. If you wanted to, you could write that as 12 over 5 minus 2 over 5x. That's the same thing. Let's try another one. Hmm, notice I have h here and there. So if I add these together, if I had, say, 3h's plus 5h's, I'd have 8h's, 3 plus 5. But I have 3r plus 5. H is, so it's 3r plus 5 times h. If you would like, we also just factored the common factor h. We factored that one out, so it's times everything that was left. And now, get everything away from the h, so we'll divide by the 3r plus 5. So it's 7 over 3r plus 5. That is not the same thing as 7 over 3r plus 7 over 5. That is not the same. You can split it with the same denominator, a common denominator. But if the denominators are different, you cannot split it. And now, a word problem. A real estate agent's base salary is $22,000 per year. Well, it doesn't seem like much. The agent earns a 4% commission on total sales. That means they sell a $100 house, they get 4% of that, or $4. Of course, houses aren't $100, or are $100,000. How much must the agent sell to earn $60,000 in one year? All right, so the amount of money, maybe we'll call it M, is 22,000 a year plus four percent. Now we remember when you do algebra, percents are written as decimals times the amount of sales. So why don't we call the sales X? All right, but we're going to have our, the amount of money we want is to be 60,000. So we'll put that in for the M and now we just need to solve for the X. Furthest from the x is the 22,000, or 38,000. Then we need to divide by the 0 0.04, the 4%. Since that was times by the x, we're dividing by that to make it go away. And 38,000 divided by 0 0.04 is 9500. Zero, 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 zero. So they need to sell $950,000 worth of homes. And depending on where you sell them, that may be quite a few homes or maybe just one somewhere near the lake shore. That's it. Have a good day.